Yeah, looks like, yep, it's even counting. All right, so. Take to Europe. <clears throat> Europe, I like Europe better. <laughs> it has been so long, I have no idea where we are tonight. You should be ashamed. Last week we didn't do Genesis. Was well, it Macedonians? John. We're not in John. Not Macedonians? No, John. No, you're supposed to. We did John last time. So we're in Genesis chapter 46. 46. 46. Are you done vacationing for a while? Remember who I'm married to, okay? You all right. can't take off like that anymore. Yeah, you, you, got, you got to talk to the high command. She I makes will. all she makes all the calls. Um, she she's got. Uh, let's see what the heck is she got? Right now we're right now we're planning to go see Vinny. All right, mid August. And then uh, another trip in September. And then nothing. No, I I take it back. We have to go to Pennsylvania. Um, hey, this month for a wedding. But we will be. We, we won't miss any Wednesdays. Um, and, um, but that, that that's that's my wife. My wife just uh, my no moss grows on that girl. She, just keeps, she keeps moving. I can understand that. We, we need uh, Wednesdays. <laughs> you and me both. Oh, we all miss this. I need them bad. I lose the friends. Well, we, you know, again, with the technology, we, we may just have to Skype it regardless of where I'm at. And it's up like that, too. <laughs> so you want to go back to Egypt? I wish I was. All right. We, if, it, if you're using the right Bible, okay, it's page, 40, uh, page 74. That's a joke. No, 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 please, don't go there. It's a joke. Genesis <laughs> 46. Your Bibles are out of all different pages. No, yeah. And we're not using the exact same edition. Jacob goes to Egypt. Yeah, but, yeah. That's right. Jacob goes to Egypt. Genesis chapter 46. And especially seeing that we've been apart so long, uh, we, we are dying in desperate need uh, for a review. Fortunately, this is such a wonderful chapter to review. Is chapter 45, right? No. No? Mm -hmm. It's 46. No, no, we're reviewing. Oh, you're going to review 45. Oh, that's it. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In case you missed it. Yeah, in case you missed it. I didn't review Well, you want to go back to where I didn't we'll miss. You've got to go back about <laughs> 75,000 <laughs> books. Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> Okay. He's just gonna review it. Um, yeah, cause, cause I forgot everything about no, 45. No, so we need, so. I, I need you guys it. to help me with that I again. Oh, okay, I'm gonna start asking some questions here in a minute. You're all gonna remember. I hope so. Oh, I'm certain of it because this is the most. This is one of the most wonderful chapters in the Bible. It's chapter 45. Yeah. All right. Uh, when we last met, Joseph was now number number one guy to Potiphar, uh, to, sorry, to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. All right? Remember he had those dreams? Yeah. All right? And, you know, well, the, the, the Pharaoh had dreams, and Joseph was the only one who could interpret them. Right. All right? What were those dreams about? Famine. Famine. That's what they were about. They were about feast. And feast. feast and famine. Feast. And death. Yeah, there's going to be seven years of good times. Mm -hmm. Lots of good food. And seven years. And then seven years of bad famine. It was Joseph who was able to interpret those dreams. So what did Pharaoh do? Send him back to where he was coming from? No, no. he made him, he made him uh, the head one of taking care of all the... All of Egypt. Taking all, care of all the food. What did they do with the food? The food they yep. stored it. They stored one-fifth of it. Okay. It was really cool. All right. So then a funny thing happened on the way to the farm. While, while Joseph is really the boss in all of Egypt, and he's saving millions of lives because during the famine, only Egypt had food to sell. A couple of young guys, I don't know how young they were, came down from Canaan, modern-day Israel, and went in to buy food. And Joseph had particular interest in those guys. Why? They were his brothers. See, I told you you can remember all this stuff. They were his brothers. These are the same guys who did what to him? Sold them. Into slavery. slavery. All right? Which God allowed. <clears throat> because as a result, everybody gets saved. So this terrible thing that was done to Joseph turns out saving everybody. That's a direct relation to Jesus Christ. 
God's plan, that something absolutely terrible happens to Jesus Christ, but because of his sacrifice, what happens? The world is saved. We have salvation in Jesus Christ. We will not suffer judgment for our sins because of Jesus' sacrifice on a cross for us at Calvary, because of his shed blood covers us. Same thing that happens here. Joseph's sacrifice of being sent to prison and badly treated results in him being glorified in the saving of millions of people from starvation. So now, here's Joseph. His brothers are there asking him for a favor to save him. They don't realize who he is. Joseph recognizes his brothers. And what does he do? He keeps Benjamin. Well, yep, that's coming up. He don't let them know he knows. He doesn't let them know who he is. And then he begins asking them questions. And he keeps one of the brothers and sends the other brothers back to get his full brother, Benjamin. All right, the brothers go back. They get Benjamin, even though it breaks their father's heart. Yes. He thinks he's going to lose Benjamin. He's already lost Joseph. Now he thinks he's going to lose Benjamin. Why is Joseph and Benjamin so important to Israel or Jacob? Because they were really actually brothers. They were full brothers. The same father and same mother. Yes, and who was their mother? Rachel. Rachel, Rachel the one, his, beloved. his most beloved, which he favored over uh, the other, his other wife and the concubines that he wound up having children with. Not a good thing. But needs to say. So now they come back and they bring Benjamin with them. Joseph does finally reveal himself. How do the brothers react? Scared to death. Scared to death. Because of, they knew what they had done to him. But that's not how Joseph responds to them. So a whole lot of weeping going on. A lot of crying. A lot of forgiveness. A lot of love. And again, very Christ-like. That's the way we're called to be ourselves. So, all right. Then Joseph sends his brothers back to tell his dad he is still alive and to bring everybody and his brother on down to Egypt where they'll be safe. And well taken care of. And the celebration was had by all. Okay? See, you guys know all this stuff. We're all up to speed. We, we know what's happening here. It's because we read John. It's because you read John. I can't wait to get to John. You guys are going to have John down so well. We're just going to cruise right through it. We've Probably not. <laughs> We've memorized it already. Well, no, it's, it, well, also, John's a very deep book. Deep. <laughs> very deep. Very, very deep. Okay. We're in Genesis chapter 46. <clears throat> We're going to begin in verse 1. I am not going to read the genealogies. I'm just going to talk about them. But we're not going to read through the genealogies. There's, that's a lot of fun if you want to get into that. Um, there, there, again, it just proves over and over again that this is a history book all right, and not a, a mythology book. All right, so here we go. Uh, Genesis chapter 46, verse 1. So Israel set out with all that was his. And when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. And Jacob left Beersheba, and Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport them. They also took with them their livestock and the possessions that they had acquired in Canaan. And Jacob and all his offspring went to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. These are the names of Israel who went to Egypt. So these are the children you can see. So there's Reuben and his sons. Simeon and his sons, Levi and his sons, Judah and his sons, Issachar and his sons, uh, Zebulon, all the way on down. Then they pause in verse 15. They say, these are the sons Leah bore to Jacob in Padamaram. Pa right? Leah was Rachel's sister. Besides his daughter Dinah. Oh, Dinah gets mentioned again. Right? 
we don't mention a lot of the girls. The sons and daughters of his were 33 in all. I know. Then they continue. The sons of Gad, the sons of Asher. All right. These are the children born to Jacob by Zilpah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Leah, 16 in all. Then the sons of Jacob's wife Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. In Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by Asanath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. So he, so Joseph had married an Egyptian. The sons of Benjamin are mentioned. And then verse 22, these are the sons of Rachel, who were born to Jacob, 14 in all. The son of Dan, the sons of Naphtali, these are the sons born to Jacob by Bilhah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Rachel, 7 in all. <clears throat> so now we're in verse 26. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were his direct descendants, not counting his sons' wives, numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family which went to Egypt were 70 in all. Verse 28. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds, they tend livestock, and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, What is your occupation? You should answer, Your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Okay. So going back to the beginning of, of chapter 46. Are you able to shift back and forth between the names Israel and Jacob? Do you realize it's the same person? Yeah. Very good. Because the Bible shifts back and name. forth. Yeah, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. You know, one who struggles. All right? And of course, that's the name of the nation today, is Israel. So in, ver in uh, verse 1, So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached Bathsheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. That's important. Uh, Bathsheba is the place where his grandfather, Abraham, as well as his father Isaac, made sacrifices and worshipped God. Verse 2, And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob. <clears throat> By the way, Anytime God calls you, there's only one reply. Here I am. Here I am. Right. There's a great, great story about Samuel. The same thing happens to him, the great prophet of God. Again, uh, living in the temple, he hears God call him when he was a boy. He keeps thinking it's, it's the uh, prophet Eli who he's living with. And he keeps waking up. He hears, he hears Samuel, Samuel. He goes running over to Eli. He wakes up Eli. <laughs> Eli said, you know, after the, when it came to the third time, Eli said, look, it's God calling you. Just answer. And that's how Samuel answers. Here I am. Here I am, he replied. In verse 3, I am God, the God of your father, he said. All right, before I read the next part, I'm going to, give it, I'm going to ask the question first so you have the answer right in front of you. We've said this many times, so, but it's really cool to constantly pick up on it again. What's the number one admonition God gives us in the Bible? What's the number one thing he tells us to do? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear not. All right? <clears throat> Here he is telling Israel, do not be afraid. Remember, Israel is not a young man. And he's about to make a very, very long trip. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that the same promise God made to Abraham yep. and Isaac? All right? And he's just reinforcing it to Jacob. He's already made it to Jacob. 
something before. He's just reinforcing it. Again, the key understanding of the book of Genesis is that he that God is the God of promises. He continues to keep his promises and he continues to make them. Okay. <clears throat> Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Let's go back to verse 4. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. That's a prophecy from God. He's telling the future. When does he bring him back? That Joseph would close his eyes. Yeah, but we'll get to that in a second. Hold that thought, because I'm about to ask a question about that. What is this whole thing about going back to Canaan? When, when does that happen? Through Moses. Through Moses. Through Moses. Remember, this portion of Genesis <coughs> is just setting the stage for Moses. Joseph is the man who's saved Egypt. He has saved many other peoples, including Israel. But as we read in Exodus, the book, next book of the Bible, a pharaoh rises up in Egypt who does not remember Joseph. And he enslaves the Israelis, all right, the Hebrew children. He enslaves them, and, they, and they're living in Goshen. You'll see that. If you go back and watch the movie The Ten Commandments, again, you'll see it. They're, they're, the, uh, the Hebrew children are all living in Goshen. Okay. But right now, Goshen's a very, very nice place. It's just that they're not expecting to see millions of Hebrews. God not only uh, blesses Joseph now, when he says, you will be a mighty nation, he's not kidding. By the time we get to Moses, there are millions of Hebrews living in Goshen. Okay. So now, second part of verse 4, and Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Why is that a big deal? he's going to be with his father when he dies. He will be with his father. Jacob now knows that when he does die, the son that he thought he lost will be the one with him at his death, which is a great comfort to him. This is thousands of years ago. Wouldn't we all say the same? Wouldn't we want our children around us? It's a very powerful thing. So that is a great promise that uh, God is making to Joseph, um, to Jacob, about Joseph. So verse 5. Then Jacob left Beersheba. And Israel, so you know, as they keep going back and forth between the names. And Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport him. It's so funny, the irony. Because it's going to be the other way around when they leave. They also took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in Canaan. And Jacob and all his offspring went to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. Okay? So let's drop this drop all the way on down. Now we're in verse 26. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those were his direct descendants, not counting his sons, wives numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of, the Jacob's, fam of Jacob's family, which went to Egypt, were 70 in all. That's another numero numerology thing. All right, another number of perfection. Now watch what happens here. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. What do you think that's all about? I mean, it's obviously, the number one thing is, how do we get to Goshen? But he chooses Judah. Judah's going to be very important. Judah's very important. Yeah, Judah's the line of David. Isn't Judah the one? Uh, yes, David. right. He's the one that David, line of David. But remember, isn't Judah the one that, that stayed behind? It's the high command. High command. Just, just for the fun of it. Hi, sweetie. We're right in the middle of the Bible study. Everybody's happy you called in. <laughs> oh, gosh, I forgot. <laughs> Judy, Judy gave me all the grief I told you she would. Okay, all right, and and we are right now discussing, all right, why it was Judah that was sent ahead of Israel to um, to uh, find the way down to Goshen. Yeah, 
Yeah. Any, 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 you want to make any comments? <laughs> yeah, she wants to. You call sure? Me. I can put you on speakerphone. Probably in the middle of an operation, liberal. Well, it's not, sweetie. It's not like it's ever happened before. <laughs> it does. Well, everybody misses you. Yeah, she better be here next week. Uh, well, right now she's planning on being here Sunday, and and you, you right now you're not working next Wednesday, right? No. Hot dogs next here. Wednesday. Hot dogs next Wednesday. I love. <laughs> Bye. She's so funny. She always, she does, she forgets. Well, she hasn't seen her husband for all day long, so that's important. So, <clears throat> Judo, no, wait a minute, who was the one, that, I, again, I, I'm being honest, I don't remember. Who was the one that was kept behind? Simeon, wasn't it? Let's go find out. I can't really remember. That's, who, that's the only name that keeps coming to mind. See, I don't think it was, I think it was Judah. Okay, so to Pharaoh's dreams, Joseph in charge of Egypt, Joseph's brothers come to Egypt. Okay, they say, so, da, 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 da. All right. Well, all right, so this is verse 30. There, there your father Jacob said to them, you know, Nope, that was, that's the way up there. Just said to them, I should have looked this up before you started. Why didn't I tell you not to send against the board? Wow, this is bad. I should have known this. Send one of your number to get your brother. Yeah, that's right. Then he changed it. He said Simeon was taken. Simeon was kept. Right, you're in verse 24. Yeah. Okay. So you were you were right. He turned away from them and began to weep, and then turned back and said to them, "He had Simeon taken from them and bound before their eyes." Okay. So you were right. Excellent. So Judah gets sent down now to head, you know, because he, he's, he is one of the oldest. Remember, Reuben's the oldest. So Judah has to go down, all right, and see Joseph all by his onesies. Anyway, so now we're back into... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Uh, verse 28. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready, and went to Goshen to meet his father, Israel. Chariots are not taxi cabs. Chariots exist primarily just for one reason. Fighting. Fighting. Now, they're also the fastest way to move around, except on horseback itself. That could also be the possibility here. But look, Joseph, got a, Joseph has a chariot. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept. Now, there's something different here. For a long time. All right. They do talk about previously about him weeping. And they wept together. They talked for a long time. But now they weep for a long time. Did the same thing with Benjamin when he first Yeah, him. yeah. They they, they, again, when we talked about, I, I actually kind of criticized Joseph for being kind of mean and not very forgiving. Because he, he, he's a lot of pain. Yeah. And he's dealing with it. But he allowed forgiveness to overwhelm him. Now, in this case, he has nothing, no issues against his father, you know, but uh, it's the fact that he missed him. So where are we at? We're in, um, we're in verse 30. Yeah. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Yeah, it was the only missing part of his life. Verse 31. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household, who were living in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds. All right? The men are shepherds. They tend livestock. And they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, what is your occupation? You should answer, your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Oi, this isn't good. Yeah, this, this isn't good. Been a big change. Yeah. If you really said they were shepherds. We're we're already on a bad footing here. Okay. So, so well, he's gonna he's gonna make sure that first of all he's let them know that 
they're not going to be looked upon well. Right. And that's the reason why Joseph's going to intercede with Pharaoh, because they look down on shepherds, on, on those who tend livestock. Um, so there's a lot more to talk about that, but we'll save that for, for uh, chapter 47. So we've seen now here, we've, we've seen that the, the total reunion is complete. Uh, we've been going for m many, many months now, working our way towards this reunion and what it means. When we studied Abraham and Isaac, we saw all the struggles they had and all the difficulties they had as far as being families. We saw uh, Jacob and Esau in the struggles there. And then yet, forgiveness keeps overflowing here. Esau forgiving Jacob. Joseph forgiving his brothers. It's again, God's, God's common call to us is to be loving and forgiving. All right. All right. <clears throat> Questions and comments? Um, nothing really exciting left in the book of Genesis. This was the high point. Uh, we, have, we have some detailed things to work out here, um, some, some nice blessing stuff like that. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll just see, obviously, Jacob is going to die. Obviously, the, the, the Genesis ends with Joseph's death. Um, we'll just... Say again? It's not too exciting. No, no, nothing that. Yeah, there's, no, there's, no, and there's, there's no dun 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 dun. There's no more soap operas. There's no more major twists. There are some little things, but nothing dramatic. Uh, but foundational book to the whole Bible. If you don't know Genesis, you really can't understand the rest of the Bible. Oh. So it's just critical. You know. So it, 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 it's always a good idea. Uh, to go back uh, and read uh, Genesis. More, most importantly, um, the fall of man. How did sin enter into the world? Because uh, uh, that's what everybody's going to struggle with throughout the rest of the Bible, is the concept of sin. And that's why Christ died, because of sin. Yeah. Sin, again, is this idea of falling short of what God's called us to do, which is... He's called us to do something pretty tough. Right? Uh, what has God called us to do? Forgive. Forgive. We, we, we see this thing all over here. Forgive when people are wrong. By the way, what's, what's forgiveness? Right. So what does it mean to forgive? Love. Love, right. It's a specific term. When you forgive somebody, they you no longer you you've given up the right to hold it against them. See, if somebody wrongs you, you have the right to hold that against them. Forgiving, you no longer you've given up that right to hold it against them. I forgive you. That means I'm not going to remind you of it. I'm not going to you know beat you it, beat it out of you. And that's what Christ does when He forgave us. Forgive us. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We've talked about that. Oh. That that takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's hard well, to forget. forget a lot of things. We all wish we could. We all wish we could. That that's prayer and the holy power of the Holy Spirit to be able to forget. Is that right? Right. All right. Short study, I know. All right. Uh, but uh, you know, like I said, we'll we'll pick we'll pick it up again um, in forty seven. And uh, some more details and things like that. But within the next couple of weeks, we'll be back in the New Testament and studying the book of John. All right? God bless everybody. Talk to you later.